Hi everyone and welcome to Game Creation. So in this video today we're more interested in us being able to change directions but we're going to introduce the concept of alterable values um, and we're going to tie those alterable values to the player and alterable values are just data. So we're going to store data on that player about the direction they're going in and we're going to look and see how we, we create that, that movement in different directions. Um, we're not really interested in getting it perfect in this video. Remember, this is a week-long project, so uh, there's going to be five videos until, or five videos total, till we get it absolutely perfect. Um, but I think it will start to look more like movement by the end of this video. Let's go over to the screen. So in our last video, we got the uh, player to move. Very, very good. Um, but there's no controls. Well, I can shift it back and I can shift it up and down. Um, but it's just continuous. So um, we need to, at this point, uh, understand um, alterable values. So if I click on player, and uh, I can never remember which of these menus are, I think it's that one, you see that the player holds some values about itself, uh, which is really, really useful for later on. Um, and so what you have is you've just got numbers that the player never sees, um, that is just for you as the person um, coding the game um, that the, that are held by that active object and all active objects get I believe it was 26 but that might have changed uh, because I've got the new uh, 2.5 plus which if you haven't got I would massively recommend and we are going to be using plus um, rather than just normal 2.5 but I will say how you do it if you just had the 2.5 um, or the free edition and, and things like that. So uh, I'm going to go through the most modern way of doing this um, because obviously people always upgrade um, and very few people probably are still on 2.5 um, without thinking about upgrading because it's actually quite a good deal. Anyway, uh, I don't work for them, but uh, yeah, I d definitely recommend getting it. Uh, so alterable values are there and we can access them here. And actually what you can do is you can name them here. So this is actually quite a good... Um, place to go. So what I'm going to click is new and what I want this to know is what direction it's going in. So what I do is I double click here and I'm going to call this direction like that. And it just means that I can keep track of um, what direction this is in. Um, and you might think well can we not have that in alterable strings and you absolutely could. Um, so we could have it as, and you might ask as well, what's the difference between the two? So let's let's add that to alterable strings as well, and we can see. And I might have it in alterable string. I might, that might be easier. So uh, you can probably see straight away what the difference is, is this has to be a number. So if I try typing words in and click out, it won't accept them. It won't accept words. Here, I can put any old gibberish in. Accepts that fine. This will, um, alterable strings will always accept string, uh, accept numbers. Um, strings just mean anything you can type with a keyboard pretty much. You know, obviously it's not going to take control, but anything you can type with a keyboard. Um, values are very specific over numbers. It has to be numbers. Um, so the reason for why you have values and strings, and these really are integers, um, the reason you have values and strings is because um, computers love numbers, they love working with numbers, and if you're doing a calculation, it really helps you to have it stored as a number and not a string. Um, a string is always dealt with as a word, so it's the word two, not the number two. Um, and there's always extra steps you've got to go through to do calculations with strings, but with values, you, you just bung them into an equation, they work straight away and they work really well. Um, it's much easier for the computer to understand how much memory to store or how much memory to reserve for values rather than strings because, you know, for various reasons. Um, so because values can only be certain characters and strings can be literally any character. Um, but, uh, and if you're wondering, flags are just on and off. They're just booleans. So it's either on or off and they're really useful too. Um, because there's a lot of issues like that in in um, programming that something's either yes or no, and those you'd use flags for. Okay, so uh, I'm going to use the direction, I think. I think I'm going to use the direction alterable string. Let's get rid of that. So you just right-click and delete, get rid of that. That's that's my decision, I think, on that. Okay, so I want to go into the event editor. And uh, if you click the global one again, because I'm not used to 2.5+, plus. 
I'm still learning. And um, we're just going to follow the right arrow for now. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to instantly, uh, I don't want to worry about the pixels. All I want to do is change the algebra string that we've just um, made called direction. I want to change that to right. And I always copy these because I know I need them later on. So now this object knows that it is going right. And so for every uh, value of time there, 200th of a second, I don't want uh, it to suddenly do that. All I want to do is insert and I want to compare the ultraple string, compare to ultraple string, and I want to say if the direction equals, and there we are, I'm just going to paste that in, if it equals right. So every uh, 200th of a second, if that equals right, then I want it to move right. Okay. Now, hopefully, if I run it now, it won't suddenly move. Aha, excellent. Okay. And then if I click right now, it's moving. Fantastic. Now, I want to make sure it works for all other ones. So I'm going to, I'm going to left click on the number there. I'm going to press Control and C. And I'm going to press Control V, Control V, Control V. Um, all that does is just create uh, copies of that one. So we can just change that to left. We can change that one to up. We can change that one to down. And what I can do is just copy these in. As long as I'm clever. Copy these in, up and down. And what have I set this to? Three. So I'm going to right click this, edit it. And I'm going to say I'm going to take away three. And I'm going to take away three here. And for this last one. Okay. Now, all you need to do is set the ultraball values to left. And I'm just I'm just left clicking and dragging to copy it across. And it basically overwrites what was there, which is so useful. It just goes so much quicker. And then we're going to go down. Okay, let's try that. So I can use this to reset it so you don't have to close it and open it again. So I'm going to click right first. Perfect. And we're going to reset it and click up. Perfect. Left. Perfect. And down. Perfect. Right, something else we can do as well is at the... Um, if I go into the frame again and click on the object. I don't have to go into the frame to do this, actually. Uh, what I can do is I can create a alterable value called speed, uh, which I can't do because it's already there. Uh, so uh, frames to move. Now, um, something you'll notice is whenever I type in, I type in something called camel case. You're not allowed uh, officially, although actually I think ClickTeam lets you, but on programming languages, you're not allowed to label uh, variables with um, spaces. So what programmers do is they start off with a lowercase, and then every time they want a space, they just capitalize the word. Um, and I'm, I'm just, it's just the way I do things. There are some situations in programming, the first letter will be capitalized, and those are for very special, um, special objects and global objects or whatever. Um, but um, for click team, I always just use lowercase here. Uh, I think it does let you have spaces because it has something built in that sorts that out. So if I click there, you can actually have spaces. But if you're using this as a tool to learn about wider programming and, and use this as a kind of gateway to the bigger world of programming, it's a really good habit to, to stick to now. Uh, it doesn't take much. Okay, and I find it much easier to read because uh, it, 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 um, for, for longer ones, it keeps it much more condensed. So frames to move, we decided was three, or I decided it was three. And what I'm going to do is store that on the player itself. And I'm going to go back to the event editor. And instead of plusing three each time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to pick the alterable value. So alterable value, uh, which is this one, frames to move. And what I can do is actually just copy that there. So I'll actually, I don't want to add each time because there's some of them subtracting. Just copy that. And what you can do is actually just paste in here. All this all this bit here does is pushes words to this. 
So some people, when I've talked to them, have thought, oh, I only um, I can only use the bottom here to access stuff. No, not at all. You can actually write it. If, if I knew it was frames to move, which I did, and the player object is just active because it's the default one, then I could just write that in. I didn't need to type anything in here. So let's try that on the next one. So I could just do frames to move bracket active. And it's saying syntax error, so let's just have a look. Oh, it's a capital A on active. Honestly. Uh, active. Like that. And does it need speech marks rather than quotes? I don't know why that's saying that. Syntax error. Frames. Frame to move. Oh. See, this is the problem. This is why these things at the bottom are so much better, because it means that you uh, don't have to worry about spelling. However, um, when doing it on pro real programming, I normally just find another time I've used the, the variable and just copy and paste it so that I don't get those errors. Click OK, uh, and then do the same here. Now, you might think, well, why am I doing that? Because we know it's three. Well, we've got it repeated three times here, um, so if we wanted to change the speed of the player object, we only have to change it once, and this is one of the tenets of programming, is not to write the same thing four times, but to write it once and save it as its own thing. So if you want to tweak the game later on, you're just changing one thing rather than having to go each time changing all of it. Also, in the game itself, if we want a power-up to make the player go quicker, um, then this is going to really help us generate the extra speed with the player. Um, so it's a really good thing. Um, so let's just try that now. See if it still works. Right, up, left, down. Perfect. Okay. Uh, the next thing we want to uh, just really briefly discuss is I said that I want to start the um, kind of plus things on this and this is the first time I've done this but I've heard that you can actually have um, groups of events so this is me uh, experimenting really um, and and hopefully it goes well um, so what I want to do is I want to insert um, a new parent event is that right This is me experimenting here. Okay, so if I delete that. So what I've done is I've right clicked there and said insert a new parent event. Okay, and what it does is if you um, here, these are all linked, not in this kind of relationship where, you, where it's just cosmetic. It's just a matter of um, opening and closing that just to hide things. This means that for every two, two um, hundredth of a second, all of the following conditions will fire. So, if I drag this in, right, and I drag this in, and I drag this in, and I drag this in, notice I'm not dragging in the every two hundredth of a second, because that is said here. So for every two hundredths of a second, this will be looking down this list. Oh, is the direction right? Is the direction left? Is the direction up? Is the direction down? And it will follow these things. Now, I have absolutely no idea where this will work because I've, I've genuinely never tried this before um, with this new version. Um, so what I'm going to do is I don't want to get rid of these. I want to deactivate them. I, I want them to still to be there just in case this is completely wrong and I've mucked up. So I'm going to right click and just say deactivate all lines. So that keeps the code there in case I, I've screwed up and it's not going to work. Um, but it allows me to make sure that the actions when I click run aren't because these are firing because I, I don't want them to be. So uh, this is moment of truth. I genuinely don't know where this is going to happen. Right, up, left, down. Oh, that is, a, that is amazing. So... This the uh, programming thing we talked about earlier, and just only having one t one value to change. We had one, two, three, four to change before. If we wanted to make it like um, what a hundred frames per second, um, we only have one um, one place now. 
okay every 200 of a second if i wanted to make that every 100 of a second one place to change it one place to change it there we go and i can actually change the direction as it goes only one place i need to change that now which is amazing so now that um, i'm happy with my coding i can click here and if you hold down shift and click where you want the selection to finish and then right click and delete i don't need that anymore Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more from us, please click subscribe. We release videos every single weekday at 7pm UK time. Thank you.